Mayo Clinic in Rochester, and I also go over to the Mayo Clinic for to Skin Health Services in La Crosse. So um, happy to meet you. I'm a care services manager over here in Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota. I live in Rochester. Um, I'm an occupational therapist by trade, and I have worked in that neuro rehab space at Mayo for over 10 years and really worked with people with that ALS diagnosis kind of up and down the diagnosis. So I'm um, happy to answer any questions as they come up. Like Diane so graciously said, please keep this informal. Please interrupt me. If I'm talking too fast and I need to repeat, flag me down. I could talk about equipment all day. So just feel free to interrupt at any time as we're going along. So I'm going to share my screen here in a second, and then we can kind of get started. Um, as for my brag for the day, uh, my son will be starting kindergarten this year, and he's so excited that he put all this stuff in his backpack already. So I feel like that's a win that he's excited to go to kindergarten. I just now have to take it all back out and unpackage it and get it ready to go. So win, it's a win. All right. Okay. So. Today's um, topic is going to focus on adaptive equipment and ALS. So really looking at different pieces of equipment that could be beneficial or things you might see along your journey. I have it broken down. Um, you can kind of see my roadmap. Again, take, it, take me off course, that's fine. I put it on Diane and Kathleen to kind of pull me back in if we need to get um, focused on where we're going. So I kind of want to start for equipment that we'll use for those activities of daily living um, and then kind of switch over to equipment that might be more helpful for those ideals or those activities outside of the basic self cares. I do want to touch on durable medical equipment that was not the focus of this um, presentation, but happy to answer questions again and oh, ask as we go along. And then most importantly, at the end, where can we get this equipment? If there's something you feel like that's beneficial, let's talk about what you have for options to get it. So the first part I want to um, kind of do is to, to define what is adaptive equipment or AE or what is durable medical equipment or DME. These are very different things and they can mean very different things when you're talking to a provider or family members or even when you're looking at from cost perspective. So that adaptive equipment. So that's really defined as a tool or a device used to assist someone with performing a daily activity for on a more independent level. Now, adaptive equipment is not covered, typically not covered by any insurance plan as it's not deemed medically, necess medically necessary. That's another conversation another day and we could go on, on and on about that. But it is, to me, it is very necessary. It's just that insurance doesn't see that and so, a lot of this equipment we'll be talking about will be paid for out of pocket. The good news is, is at least this equipment tends to be on the cheaper side of things as we go along. Durable medical equipment. So, you know, that's defined as tools or devices that are deemed necessary by a physician and the need is evaluated by a clinician, such as a PT or OT, and then that speech therapist if it's a communication type of device or speech generating device. Um, Often, but not always, this type of equipment is covered by insurance if it is pre prescribed by a physician and it has the letter medical necessity to kind of back it up. And we can talk more about that later if you guys have more questions. Um, the part of DME that tends to be more expensive. So thankfully it is more often covered by insurance. So before we get to the adaptive equipment, let's talk about those activity daily activities of daily living, ADL, self-cares. You might have heard this term if you've been in clinic before or, or talked to anybody. Those things are eating, grooming, dressing, bathing, toileting. I wanted to kind of break it up into these kind of categories just because that's really how the equipment you'll see is divided up. So um, as we're going through and talking about the equipment, just know that um, I've had people use things that might be intended for eating. They found a different use for it. That's okay. It's just this is where you'll typically see this equipment is recommended. Um, and I just want to give the caveat as we move on for the slides. They're very busy. 
I intended it to have it. If we, if Diane sent it out, there's a lot of words on there. So if you're trying to remember everything that's on there, don't worry, it's spelled out for you as a resource. I'd rather keep this as a communication of talking about how or when we see the equipment beneficial. So I apologize now for the busy slides. All right, we're gonna start with eating. So I'm gonna kind of work my way around this slide. So one of the things you'll hear is a U cuff, universal cuff. Maybe you've already heard that term before. Um, are you able? Are you guys able to see my mouse? Okay. Yeah. So that's this piece here, this universal cuff. What it's designed for is um, to support. It can support um, any kind of utensil, like a knife, a fork, fork or spoon, pencil. It's to, useful when people are no longer able to actively grasp. So it holds your grasp for you. Um, just know though, if you're still able to grasp, it can also be beneficial because you're not using fatigue from a fatigue standpoint for holding on to silverware or utensil. Um, a lot of people don't think about the fact your hands have little small muscles and just constantly holding is actually quite a workout for your hand. So if we could use your hand to do other things that might be more important, this could be a, a beneficial tool. The other piece I tell families when they're looking at something like a universal cuff, it's always important to think about how strong your wrist is. And so that's something also to consider um, when you're looking at this kind of device, because there are braces that have this same kind of cuff layout with a wrist support as well. I just don't have a picture of that. Um, the orientation of the cuff, you can see in this picture, it's over the top of the palm. You do not have to wear it over the top of the palm. It can rest in the palm kind of like you can see down um, on this picture here. So uh, I wanted to include this. This is one of my favorite things from in, being an OT is this right angle utensil pocket. So this metal stay actually goes into the cuff part, which you can kind of see in this hand. So it puts the fork down or the spoon down in a more natural position like you would use it if you were using your hand typically. So it can be really helpful for making it easier to get your um, fork or spoon down where you need it to go to pierce or scoop food and then bring it back up to your mouth. And you just, it's just a piece you can add into something you already, already have. Um, a lot of you might have heard of built up utensils. I have the built up utensils and some foam. So the rule of thumb is the fatter, the thicker something is, the easier it is to hang on to. And again, from a fatigue standpoint, it's also easier. One of the nice things about um, bent up bent, ut bent up utensils is that you can change the positioning of or the positioning orientation of the device. Again, if you're holding something straight out, that's going to take a lot more movement in your shoulder than if it's kind of angled where it normally would be to be able to scoop. So just kind of making other pieces easier to keep that fork and spoon in the direction you would normally see it. The foam. I, I mean, I like the built up utensils. The nice thing about the foam, though, is you can, you don't need more than one built up utensil. You can move the foam around to different things. So, you know, you could throw a pair in your purse and then if you are your bag, take them out at a restaurant quick, put them on, take them back off. Um, just a quick rule of thumb I like to tell people too is if you ever put like a rubber band around it or like Coban or something sticky it makes the foam go even further because now it's not smooth. Now it's got a rough texture that makes it easier to hold. Um, the other piece we have are rocker knives. So I have two different kinds. You've seen, this is more of a T-bar and this one actually is called an Ulu knife. Ulu knives are an Alaskan hunting knife. Um, they're commercially available. They're a lot sharper than this style of rocker knife. This can be really helpful with preparing food or also cutting meat or thicker items. They're a little bit bulkier. This rocker knife is a lot easier for smaller things you might see on your plate typically. They both work in the motion instead of having to try to hold and go back and forth. Now you're able to apply pressure and it rocks back and forth to make that cut for you. Um, I've also had people modify pizza cutters in the same way. Again, getting more of a rolling motion than trying to generate a sawing motion. And the last is the drinking straws. So extendable drinking straws, it might, you might already know about or come to mind, but just being mindful that it can bring things up closer to you to kind of keep that independence if you're not able to pick up device, especially because liquids are heavy. So even if a glass is half full, trying to pick it up might be a little bit harder. 
if I can make some comments. Go ahead. Some of that. Uh, we never had much success in these heating utensils. We pride, pride them all on under home care. They were provided with a charge right. uh, for them. And uh, the foam handles over there, uh, we found that it was also good for, at least with my wife, her hands clenched shut real tight. And uh, so I took those foam things and stick them in so that her uh, fingernails didn't dig into her uh, palm. So that was another use for it. Wonderful. Thanks for sharing, Ron. Anyone else before I move on? Some other eating items. So the Pat Saunders straw is just a different kind of a valve straw that makes it not as hard to suck liquid up because it kind of holds. That would be something um, typically I would want you to, we would want you to ask your speech therapist about just from a safety standpoint where if you're sucking that it's not going to be too much in your mouth. The nosy um, glass or cup is really helpful. So normally when you take a sip, you have to be able to bring your head back. This takes out that feature of if you can't bring it up as high or lean back, that you can get the cup dumped down and not hit your nose to be able to take a sip. And then the scoop plates. Um, a lot of times you'll see scoop plates are really helpful more when we're using um, some of this other type of equipment because it gives you a ledge to kind of catch your spoon on because you're not able to kind of dip it like you would normally. Um, it's also really nice in a sense where if it's on there, if you're using a regular spoon, maybe you don't have anything built up, but that ability to kind of turn your hand over and up and down is harder. So then it can help in that standpoint. The drinking cup, this one's a regulating cup. You can find ones that slow down the flow just to make it easier to manage. I like this cup more because of the handles. Those open-ended handles, you're not having to rely on the grasp. The hold, you can slide your hands in, and then really you rely on the bony yeah. palm to kind of hold it in your hold it in your hand and and be able to move it up and down. Um, and then the last one is this this five in one tool. Um, what I have liked best about this is from a I can tell you from a personal story when I worked with a gentleman where he just wanted to be able to open his water bottles, like he he needed to be able to get to a water bottle. He did not like the pop tops, but he was when he was home by himself, he had no way to open that cap. He didn't have the strength to be able to hold a cup. So we ended up using a vice grip before I found this. So he had set a vice grip. So he had that lever. Levers are going to be really helpful. That's what I like about this device for opening things is it gives you a lever. So that way you can use like your palm of your hand or something to push versus trying to hold tight squeeze and then move it. It just gives you a lot more options to utilize some of the strength you may have. And then let's move on to grooming. So these, there's a lot of different things with the grooming. So, you know, washing your face, brushing your teeth, combing your hair, all makeup's another grooming tip um, that you can look at. These are one of my favorite things. Maybe you guys have had experience with them, these little silicone handles. You can get them on Amazon pretty cheap, but it kind of turns everything into that U-cuff in a sense where you can slide it onto your hand and it just gives you a little more support. Um, a wash mitt, like, I've had people make these, you can get them on Amazon. So again, looking at trying to hold on to something, manage it in your hand while, you're, while it might be harder moving your arm is a lot to ask to do. Here, you just have to worry about getting your hand where it needs to go, rather trying to hold something and then use it where it, where it is. Um, these fingernail clippers are great. They suction, they hold. They make so many different varieties though. They now have little handheld electric clippers you can get for like 25 bucks, which are, which are great. You know, if you're worried about um, cutting your finger or doing it, they make one-handed clippers too, where you can slide your hand in and push down with your palm and to clip your fingernails. So there's a lot, of, a lot of variations. This is an older school one, but this works really well too to keep the grip um, clipper from sliding. The long handled comb, again, this will be for the right person, right place, right time. It's an inexpensive item, but it might give you that reach just where you need it to go. I actually had somebody who used this more as a way to scratch their head when they had an itch than to actually comb. Again, 
whatever way you need it to be able to get it to where you need it to go. And then just a long handled sponge, whether it's harder to get your hands where they need to go, or maybe get reach over and get to your feet. A long handled sponge is really helpful. Um, take a, if it's not in the angle you want, take a, um, a heat gun, or if you have a really hot setting on a hair dryer, that this plastic melts really easily. So we would heat these and just kind of bend them. So that way, if you're reaching and stuff, it's not shooting weight out. You can kind of get around your shoulders. It's really malleable if you heat it up and then it cools down. Okay, for dressing. So a lot of different things. I have two slides on, on dressing. Um, zipper pulls, I mean, if, you've, if you have a need for a zipper pull, it's pretty self-explanatory, but you're not having to try to hold on to something, that pinch, you can grab um, a knuckle through it, whatever you need to grab and pull. It kind of goes along with the button hook. This end of the button hook specifically, it's designed as a zipper pull. So sometimes people don't even recognize that there is another little hook on the button hook, but that is what it's designed for, is to give you, hook it in, be able to manage manage zippers that way. I have two different dressing sticks. So you'll see this wood kind, which again, you can see it has a zipper pull, or the blue, um, this blue kind. They have their pros and cons. Um, I have seen more benefit of this one typically, just because you get the combination of the long handled shoehorn, so you can get your shoe in. It's thicker, again, the wider something is, the easier it is to hang on to. Um, and then the hook itself is a little more intuitive. They, this hook works really well too. It's just not as intuitive when people are trying to figure out how to um, orient the device to get it to work. So you'll see, you can see here where somebody's trying to get it on um, over their shoulder. You know, another way I, I've had people use it is actually getting their elbows on the table so then they could use the device to pull it over their head because they aren't able. So there's a lot of ways to play around with making that device um, usable for what you need. It's also really nice for trying to get clothing started or to push it down. So if it's hard for you to push clothes off your feet or get them down, this is another device that can help you get it down and over your feet. And then elastic shoelaces, I had a different picture that is like the true elastic. They look like laces, but they're elastic shoelaces. They make such cooler and um, easier to use elastic shoelaces. What I don't like about the, I don't want to say older school, but the uh, original elastic laces is that they tighten down. So the more you use them, they kind of get tighter and tighter. It's harder to get your foot in versus some of these elastic laces. It, it allows the shoe to really be a slip on where then it's just a matter of using a handled shoe horn, stepping in, and then having that shoe on your foot. The last of the um, dressing equipment is a reacher. You'll find a multitude of use for a reacher if you need one, but it's also really handy for getting dressed. Um, it just gives you that extra reach to get down to your feet, especially if you aren't able to bring your feet kind of up to you. It does require more hamstring. So this one you'll see more is if you have weakness in your legs, but your hands are doing a little bit better. Um, if you are using a reacher, I'm gonna give you um, my my carry home tip that is, is fold, if it's underwear, pants, fold the waistband over one time because then they hang open when you hold on to them. If you put them on just as is, they collapse and you can't see where your foot is going. So just know that if you're gonna use this to kind of get dressed, fold that waistband, you're gonna have way less frustration with it. Um, the pant extenders, I've actually, I didn't know how much people use these before I started in this position about a year ago. These get asked for a lot and they people have really enjoyed them in the sense of how much easier it makes them to buckle their own pants. So um, it just, Really what it is, it's just giving you that opportunity to hook versus trying to button button your pants in a sense. And then there's a sockade. There are a lot of different styles of sockades. Again, this is one where um, you either need to have a little more strength in your hands or have somebody set it up for you. So the two handled ones can be really helpful, but I've had people who have, they make designs where it's a single, one single strap, then you have a little more leverage to use like your elbow or, or whatnot to pull it up versus trying to use grip strength to pull them on and up. 
just a comment on the return. Sure. Your grandkids will really love it. <laughs> my, my grandkids love playing with Grandma's Reacher. Mm -hmm. Did she have? Did Karen have this style? She did exactly like that. But really, her hands went so soon in the process mm -hmm. that a lot of this stuff uh, that hang on in any way didn't work. And I, my advice to to anyone is uh, start early using this stuff. And, you know, I was always here, so when she couldn't do it, I would help her. By the time this stuff was offered, we were past that uh, stage of being able to, just like the easy stand, uh, never used it. It sat here for months so at a time. Uh, so she couldn't hang on to it anymore. And so use, use this stuff early and don't wait too long to uh, try it out. I love that endorsement, Ron. And just to piggyback on that, what I'll tell you is, I know looking at when I've worked with people is they wanna keep your independence. This is to keep your independence, but it's to look at also your fatigue and managing fatigue. You might be able to get dressed or do some of these things. It might take 30 minutes. You get it done, but then you're exhausted and need a break. Whereas using one piece of equipment might save you 10, 15 minutes then you have that much time to go do what you want to do, not be stuck using all that time and energy just to get ready for your day. Okay, let's talk about bathing. So this is the adaptive equipment that kind of falls. It's, you know, sometimes people will, will refer to it as durable medical equipment. I'm putting it under the adaptive equipment heading because this is stuff insurance will not pay for. Medicaid in some states, yes. Long-term care policies, if you have a good policy, yes. For the majority of people, Medicare, private insurance, no. They will not pay for this type of equipment. So that's why that's kind of why I got shuttled over into this, this category, if you're wondering. So, so the shower, just, go ahead. I just, just mention, uh, ALS has a support program. And uh, like the shower chair and the grab bars, uh, we turned in that bill and they... Uh, took care of it. So uh, uh, feel free to use utilize uh, ALS uh, uh, program. Well, even if you're not a speaking speak my language, Ron, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so the, sh the, the different types of equipment really rely on what your, your bathroom is set up like. So something like a shower chair, this is one example. They make them with hand rest. We actually have extra tall ones you can see if depending on your frame. Um, this is, it's a really nice support, right? One from a, a fatigue, again, you're gonna hear that over and over, but it takes 30% more energy to stand to do something versus sitting. So again, you might be able to stand, but if you can sit for a little bit from a breathing standpoint or just from an overall fatigue, do that, especially because people don't think showers are fatiguing, but maybe you guys can acknowledge they are, you know, that just that change in water temperature makes your heart rate increase, makes it a more ca higher calorie burn, more fatigue. The other piece is you're using your arm all the time when you're trying to shower. And again, anytime you use your arms, the energy expenditure goes up. So it drives your fatigue up. So can't take your, can't take some of those things out of it. So let's sit down and save energy where we can. The shower bench. The boost of the shower chair to like a shower bench or a shower stool is a backrest and armrest. This is pretty, this is your least invasive, but also the least supportive of all the different types of bathroom equipment. So usually we'll see someone might start here or here and then move to something with a little more support. Um, a tub transfer bench. This is really helpful for once you're no longer able to step over a ledge. And that could be a big tub ledge. That could be a two inch threshold. Um, into a walk-in shower. And that's one of the things I've run into a lot as an OT um, is we think a walk-in shower is really accessible, but there's still that lip and you still have to step over it, meaning you have to put weight fully on one foot. And that's where it can be a little more challenging. So this type of bench is really helpful because you can, this part sits outside the tub, you can sit and transfer and then kind of scoot over. You're still allowed to stand up if you want to stand up for part of it, but you have that way to get in and out safely without catching your foot on a ledge or being um, 
or putting someone else at risk when they're helping you step up and over. They make different types, so just be aware. I have the pretty generic type. They make ones that have a seat that kind of slide across two. So if it's harder for somebody to scoot or depending on how they get on the bench, um, we have, there's different varieties that way, but this is going to be your most cost-effective bench here. And then last, just, the oh, go ahead, Ron. Sorry to interrupt all the time. No, thank you. Please Everybody, keep interrupting. Your, your experience with all this stuff. The tub transfer bench, if you're under home care, uh, they will provide one for you and uh, at no cost. And, and again, we waited too long by the time they brought it. My wife are just sitting up straight. It was just too dangerous. And so we went to the sponge baths then after that. But, uh, so there is a way of, uh, and they should cover that if you're under home care. And then the last piece is the grab bar. So we have a suction cup grab bar. Suction cup grab bars can be really nice if you're using them to kind of provide a stability point is what we say, right? Where you just want to have something to touch to kind of regain your balance. We really um, shy away from recommending these if you need it for leverage. So if you're somebody where if you're going to fall and try to hold yourself on, you need that leverage to get up to stand, to walk in and out. That's where you need one that's really mounted and fully assessed by a per, um, it, it could be a family member, but it really needs to be a screwed in mounted because of the weight disbursement you're gonna put behind that bar. You can have the strongest um, suction cup and if you were to fall and grab it, it would go right with you. Um, a good rule of thumb, if you're using a grab bar, is people wonder like, where do I put them? Um, 35 and a half inches is your ADA standard. So whether it is sitting horizontally or vertically, right about there is a good place to use it, whether you're sitting or standing up. Um, if you are somebody who's a little taller, a little shorter and using a walker, go by your walker handle height. Again, it's a really nice um, height for whether you're sitting or standing with using that type of um, grab bar. Just another suggestion on that. Uh, again, I should shut up pretty soon probably, but anyway, uh... Uh, you can put it flat on top of your sink top. Oh. To on to, and we found that being really, really helpful. But always test it first of all, that it hasn't loosened up. Rob, were you using it so she could get up to standing, kind of to pull forward? Well, just to stabilize herself, something to hang on because the sink yeah. is smooth. There's nothing to hang on to. And with that thing, she could hang on to that. But I would always test it first because sometimes one and is loosened up and you have to re uh, seal it before they use it. I love that. I'm stealing that. I will give you full credit, but I think okay. that's a really, a really I'll great say, way I'll to use that device. Okay, <laughs> great. I will give you Diane's address and she can repay you. <laughs> uh, and then we'll talk about toileting as well. Again, same kind of thing with the bathroom equipment that, you know, you know private insurance, uh, Medicare is not going to pay for these things. Again, Medicaid, uh, depending on your state, might um, long-term care plans. And then hospice will provide these if they have them as well. So the toilet safety frame, it's one of my favorite things. One, because it doesn't change anything about your bathroom. You don't have to screw anything in. You basically lift that toilet seat up. There's a plate where you put it between the toilet seat and the toilet bowl. Put your bowl back or your lid back down and it's secured. It basically gives you arm rest. So then you're allowed to be able to use arms to push up to into standing or to also put your hand back down. If it if you sit down where you kind of buckle your knees, go pretty fast, it gives you an opportunity to kind of put your hand behind you to help guide your butt down. The other piece I like about the toilet safety frame is that they're independent of each other. So I, I have families ask, well, I don't have the space. Well, you, this side can be removed independently of this side. So even if you can't use both armrests, you might be able to use one and use it on the side that's stronger, depending on where your weakness is. You can also do a raised toilet seat. The, the higher a surface is, the easier it is to get off of. Now, granted, if you are short like Diane and I are, then it's also harder to get on. So the, it's this fine balance of trying to get a seat surface as high as it can be without being too high. 
Um, raised toilet seats come in a variety of inches. You can get two, four, even up to six inches sometimes. Um, and they can come with these kind of armrests that would give you the same function as the toilet safety frame, or they could just come as donuts. Um, you can pair a donut raised toilet seat with the toilet safety frame and kind of mix and match. Also note, and I can be happy to share it with Diane if need be, but days don't typically work with raised toilet seats, but some do. And we have I have a good video that kind of walks you through if you're thinking about, oh, do I want a bidet? Yes, but if you need a raised toilet seat, eventually something just to think about um, as you're planning to kind of keep that keep that bidet function while also bringing your toilet up. There's always a good bedside commode. The the benefits of a bedside commode is that you you can take it where you need it to be. So if you're using a lift or it's hard to get into the bathroom, especially I'm thinking more around nighttime or you're more tired, take the commode where it needs to go and then you can use your lift right there. Um, you can also put it right over the toilet itself and it acts in a way as a raised toilet seat and a, a toilet safety frame. And you can, if you ask, if you're looking, they have shield guards because that's a complaint sometimes if you're using the bedside commode over a toilet is that you can have a little more of a splash. So looking for a shield guard where that way, if you're using it, it's not making more of a mess for your your family or your care provider to clean to clean later on. And then there's the bathroom. There's a, a wide variety of bathroom buddies or bathroom um, wands, so to speak. This is kind of a case by case scenario on what might work. Honestly, one of the things I've liked is go get a pair of toilet tongs, bend them at 45 degrees, and it gives you that reach you normally need. But th these are options, again, if it's hard to get or it's hard to hold on to the toilet paper itself, you can use a device like this. If I may comment again. Um... Go ahead, Ron, I'm just gonna turn to you before I go to each new slide. <laughs> I got to do something with this year we went through uh, share some of these things the bed bedside commode was a real blessing just to, even in the bathroom just to have it more out in the open and then later on moved it alongside of the uh lift chair to save me at least a couple of lifts mm -hmm. uh a day and whatever but make sure you get a a good one because i know the hospice brought one along and our home care whoever it was and it was kind of a cheapy and it just wasn't uh very good. The one we got was provided for us by a family whose mom had died from ALS, and they donated it to us. A real, real good one. Padded seat and everything. Very strong. And if you want to get this back to Mayo Clinic, they need to do something with their toilets. Um, it was a real struggle for us at Mayo trying to use those bathrooms, and uh, especially after being used to the com commode and so forth. Okay, that's it. Well, before we'll come back to that, because I want to hear more, because I will definitely give that feedback to them on that. But we'll, we'll come back to that. I have a note because I want to make sure I get through everything. But I, I do want to hear more. In trouble. No, I'll wear it. I'm an OT. I can say what's going on with these bathrooms and it'll be fine. Um, back to your point, And I think it's a good one, Ron, is yeah, is you can get bedside commodes. Um, that are padded, you can get ones that the arm drops down. So depending on how you're transferring or what you need to do, it might make it easier to swing someone over. Um, one of my favorite, is, it was a called the Guardian, it's a Medline, but that is a padded back, padded seat, drop arm commode, and it runs you about $120. Again, um, we'll, we'll talk about where you can get some equipment, but if you have specific needs or things where you're thinking you might want to use them, happy to share those resources as well. Okay, so let's move on to the instrumental activities of daily living. So those are the things that we want to do who make us us to take care of ourselves that doesn't go back to the self cares, you know, communication that can be telecommunications, computer writing, your self expression, meal prep, cleaning, finances, shopping, art, sports, um, music, hobbies, pub transportation. So this is kind of all those other things beyond those direct immediate means. Now, I, I kept this more broad, but I'm happy to answer questions or if you guys think there's a category missing. I could have made probably 20 slides on this, but I wanted to rein it in a little bit. 
So the first one I wanted to talk about is like meal prep or cooking because that kind of goes in with self-feeding and looks at independence with people keeping their independence if someone steps out. Um, there's different kinds of adaptive cutting boards. So uh, two-handed tasks, we call it bimanual tasks, can be really challenging. This helps stabilize so that way if you need a hand for balance, you have a hand free to do what you need to do. Um, same with the, like the automatic jar opener and the multi um, opener where they just give you that extra piece of independence for even being able to um, open up something and warm it up for yourself. Um, the What I don't like about this is kind of why I like the lever handle previously was because, um, did I miss, hang on, did I miss something? No, I didn't, sorry. Okay, sorry. Um, because you still have to grip and then push versus just having a lever to push. So I've had people kind of work around this with like with rubber bands and stuff. So you have a little bit more of a, a pressure to squeeze where you can kind of get it open and around. And so you're not working so hard to hold your squeeze as you're turning the, the opener. And then um, they make so many different kind of one handed things. Now, this is a suction brush. So I am um, for cleaning, you know, being able to just even get up to the sink or reach the sink, being able to have something stabilized so you can quick rinse something out, clean it out and then move on to your next thing. i just like to add that that multi-use or multi-opener has been yeah. really for me as well. And when we went to an OT session, they showed us all the six ways that you can use it. <laughs> and it's been really helpful. We ordered it on Amazon and it, they threw in both. It was like oh. one plus the other one that you really like. So I've used them both and really like them both. Great, thanks, Cindy. What was your, uh, tell me your favorite thing you've opened with one or like the one that's like, oh, this is awesome. Well, honestly, it's those little seals that they put on the tops of like vitamins and olive oil mm -hmm. and all those things that you can't get, I can't get um, a grip on it. So it's those things, those just little seals. <laughs> yep, I can relate. Um, so trans some different transportation access around the home. So the handy bar. There's a lot of different things you can use with this. My favorite is it gives you a handle um, where you normally wouldn't have one. And again, that's kind of a theme I think running through is being able, when you do have upper extremity strength to be able to utilize that with your legs or your body positioning. So as you can see, it just hooks right in the door, but that way you can push up on something. Otherwise you're left to trying to reach up and grab the handle that's in the car itself or reaching out to a walker. And so you lose any leverage you have to push to get up. Um, le lever handles, so door extension knobs, or even looking at different ways to change up your knobs um, for faucets, whether it's in your shower or on your sink, that round, um, a round handle is really hard to do. Any kind of lever, you have a lot more opportunities. You could also, if not in this sense, but if it's um, on a sink counter, had people use the reachers then to be able to turn water on and off because they can't reach to the back of the sink to get to it. And then the lamp switch enlarger. A lot of these are more obsolete because of all the smart home technology there is, but I do understand that some people are not smart home. And so just know that there are little things and there's a lot more than this that can make holding on to smaller things easier, giving you more leverage in your hands. The key turners is another one. I don't have that pictured, but again, giving you that, I know some cars don't need it, but like even apartment keys, house keys, where instead of holding onto something tiny, it gives it a wider surface. So then you could even try to use two hands if need be. Okay. And then the last one here is just looking at equipment for all different types of communication, computer access, um, and even just looking at some leisure things. So I want to spend some time kind of talking about these tools. I am an assistive technology professional by trade as well. So that's probably why you'll see some of this. I reined it in so we wouldn't get a lot of tech, but I want to cover a little bit of it. Just because our world is through technology now, whether you're on a computer for work, computer for leisure, an iPad for leisure, communication with family, um, tech really seems to be involved in our lives. So just know, um, just looking at how you can change up how you get to, whether it's a computer as a desktop, a laptop, a, um, 
an iPad or tablet can really make a difference. So here are different types of mice. So the, the track balls can be really nice if you've lost some strength in your arm, but your hand is a little more able to move. This way you have full power to kind of get around on the computer through the trackball. And this one too, this Kensington, you can assign these four buttons specific tasks. So if there's something hard, like saying going back into um, going back in a web browser is hard, you could assign it to this button and hit back and it would go back. Or there's or some other functions that way that's a free downloadable software. Um, I have somebody right now who's still working and she's using a vertical mouse. So instead of being turned down here where it's harder to move, she's turned up here so that it's a little easier for her to move and then use her fingers to click because as soon as you turn down, doesn't seem like a lot, but now you have to go up against gravity. And it doesn't seem like gravity is that big a deal until you have some, some weakness. Um, the ergo rests are one of my favorite things too. So if you're somebody who has some, you know, more of that, big arm weakness, shoulder, elbow, these take out gravity and allow you to glide. So that way you can reach deeper to what you need to do. So even if I know it's set up with a keyboard and mouse here, you can use it to get to a touch screen if need be. I actually had somebody who used these with eating where he got his arm out over his plate where he could scoop. And then he was able to lean forward to eat. So there's a lot of different ways to use them. It's just helpful to kind of get to where you need to go. Um, the styluses as well, there's a, a bunch of different styluses and how you can do things. This is a flexible one where you can wrap it to any shape. Actually, um, and then this is just a re regular rubber tip. I wanted to put this one on here just so you know, um, not all styluses are created equal. So if you're using that built up foam, just know that if you have, there's certain styluses that will not work because they lose their conductivity. Same reason why if you have gloves on, you can't touch an iPad, right? You buy the special gloves where you can touch your smartphone or your tablet. Once you put foam on to certain styluses, you block the conductivity of your hand and then that stylus isn't going to work. So just being mindful as you're using different things, like it's not working, that might be why. And then different um, card holders, there's card shufflers. I wanted to do the pool noodle because again, it's super cheap. You can use it here. I, it's thicker and wider, hand fatigue. It, it keeps things organized. If you cut a pool noodle in half and with a slit on top, it works just like it would this kind of card holder too. Okay. Um, any questions so far before I, I want to touch base on DME, that durable medical equipment? Okay. So the DME, so that durable medical equipment, like we talked about, these are items you're more apt to be covered by insurance. Um, it has to have a physician um, evaluation or justification along with justification from the therapist you're working with. Um, so a lot of times from those mobility aids, they kind of go up the chain, right? You have a walker, a four-wheeled walker, and then if you're not able to use one of these devices, that's where you'll see maybe more of a manual wheelchair or a scooter or a power wheelchair. So while insurance does cover um, these devices, we try to make sure you guys know that they cover one. Now, ALS is pro progressive. We know that insurance knows that it doesn't matter. They'll, they'll buy one. So if you're seeing somebody or you think you'd benefit from one of these devices, please don't ask insurance to cover it because it will not cover something down, down the line. Um, these kind of scooters can be really helpful because they're a little more, they can break down and, and be taken on the road, but just know anyone who has shoulder weakness, this is going to be a lot harder to use because you have to reach your arms out to the tiller. And we can always talk about different variations between when you go from manual wheelchairs into the power. But this power wheelchair, this um, is what usually we wait for your insurance to cover because it has all the different things, all the functions and the features that to keep you as independent and as comfortable. It just also weighs a lot. So it's hard to transport. Um, I put these two different types of commodes and shower equipment on because you will be, it will be referred to as durable medical equipment regardless because of the bulk and the expense. Again, insurance, you have a hard time having insurance pay for these. Like, that's another conversation. Medicare absolutely will not pay for either of these. 
Doesn't matter your diagnosis, doesn't matter your setup. So the rolling commode can be really nice. So like Ron had said, bring the commode to the lift chair. What's nice about a rolling commode is then you can roll it over to the toilet. One less thing for you to do, some of that privacy if you want for your loved one as well. This is a tub slider system. This is something that allows uh, for you, again, this whole black piece here is actually a rolling commode. So it functions the same way as this white one, but then it attaches and you can slide it into the tub to have access for somebody to shower as well. So it's a two for one that way. And then we're all pretty familiar with the different um, Hoyer lifts. You can get insurance to help cover these, but they cover hydraulic, they don't cover electric, which if you've used a, if you've used a Hoyer lift or a manual lift, or like this, there's quite a difference in trying to transfer somebody with the backup of electric where you have a button to push versus the hydraulic pump. Just a comment on that, uh, home mm -hmm. care and hospice will provide the, the lift for you, electric lift. Great. And also a broader chair is what we were provided by hospice. I don't know if I know what a broda chair is. Tell me more. A broda chair is just a very expensive uh, wheelchair with a high back, high sides, which would stabilize my wife from going side to side and I could okay. take her out on the road and whatever. Otherwise she was looking at the, the ground all the time and couldn't see anything. Okay. So uh, fortunately we only got to use it twice, but uh, so hospice will provide a lot of stuff uh, for you and home care also. Okay. So last, where do we get this stuff? So Ron already put this in here. He already teed it up wonderfully. Check your local ALS association. A lot of this equipment I've already showed you, and that includes this durable medical equipment can be found with your local ALS association in our loan program. So check with us first, you know, if it's something we don't necessarily have, that doesn't mean we can't work to maybe get something for you depending on what it needs and if it can be reused by somebody later on. Uh, another great resource is your state tech program. So every state has its own tech program. Wisconsin's is listed here. They have more than just tech. So you can find some of those adaptive equipment pieces as well. In, a, in addition to some of the technology equipment, which we didn't talk about tech, but there are pieces of that. But know that you, you can find um, adaptive equipment that maybe we don't have in your state tech program. You can always look at, go ahead. Quick question, um, Mo, as far as the, the short-term aspect of that. Um, so do, do you run, do people run into the challenge of then they get a call saying, Hey, time to turn it in and they're still using it or how does that work? So when I had worked with Wisconsin and Minnesota before, especially when looking with ALS, they look at the, the need, like, um, how obscure the equipment might be or like how often it's requested. And um, if it's something that's not requested very often, they've been willing to do more of an open-ended loan that way. But again, depending on how people may change, that 30 to 60 days, depending on what that short-term loan might be just the window to have it and then something something different along along the way. So um yeah i usually say when you do the loan i give up ask them to give them a heads up like i do have als is there an opportunity where this could be a, a more of an open-ended loan just because they know it will be coming back as as you change um secondary sellers and commercial websites so again anything you can i would go walmart amazon target any of those secondary commercial sites or secondary sellers to eBay, depending on what you're looking at, they're going to be your cheapest route. If you go to any um, vendor site or like, you know, well, like anything that's a medical site, adaptive equipment site, you're automatically going to pay an upcharge for it to be in that adaptive medical vendor site. And then ask your clinic or local OTs, PT. So a lot of times we might have resources your PT or OT might know of resources that are in your community like I know that VFWs have different things um, I've had people who've actually gotten a, a tub bench now they didn't have ALS but they went to savers and found something so there's a lot of other pieces that depending on what you're looking for 
your clinicians might know of it or your social workers too might be aware of, hey, we've had luck with this before with people having access to some of this equipment. The, the blessing is though, a lot of this, if not most of it can be at that local ALS mm -hmm. association. We, we do, that's one of our, our most heavily used program. And it really does provide a lot of assistance with these different pieces of equipment. The thing I didn't put on here is the quality of life grant. I think Ron kind of mentioned mm -hmm. um, that reimbursement. We now switched, I think it was the Brian Trinastic. Is that what you guys had before? Yeah. Now that we're five states, we were able to do a quality of life grant, um, which I think it started in Iowa had it, right? Am I talking? I'm just talking now. But anyway, it's a thousand dollars for to be used. You can apply each year to be used for any expense related to your ALS. So if there was a certain piece of equipment you really wanted, that could be another route for helping to take off some of the, the cost. Yeah, you know, we did that with grab bars and things like that. Yeah, That's exactly. One other thing. If it was wheelchair transportation, we use the ADRC uh, here oh. locally. And, uh, Wonderful. And they provided the transportation to La Crosse and wherever. Awesome. Great to know. Okay, that's all I have. Um, any questions from anybody? I'm, it can be about the depth of equipment or the DME. I'm happy to answer as best I can. Do you want to stop sharing, Mo? Oh, so that yeah. Can yeah, let me do that. Everybody. <laughs> there you go. I just wanted to say, um, Mo, when you were talking about how much energy is involved in daily living, definitely that is true. We all know. But um, we found these on Amazon, and it was actually oh. an ALS support group online that they were talking about them. They're scrubbies bath alternatives rinse free bath sponges and they work so nice this is how big they were but we would cut them in half and okay. sometimes then I'd even cut it like this and maybe use one on each foot but basically you get it wet and then it like like soaps up and then you don't even have to rinse it but Dave really oh. liked these too but it's nice because it says like after the gym, baby care, elder care. So now mm -hmm. I can use them, um, travel, <laughs> camping. So anyways, definitely this was a good thing when you realize that you can't take a shower every day. Nice. And then the other thing I saw on your thing were, was the, the, the thing Dave had made these years ago oh. for our daughter and granddaughter for like holding cards, you know, and I would always use this because, you know, it just made it easier. But then towards the end, he would use it too, because it was just easier to hold cards. So if you're a card player, that's definitely something. And I just, I pulled out and I see our last card game of Canasta. So he was like a thousand points ahead of me, but we never <laughs> finished it. So I guess I'll have to save this. And he won the last game of cards. Oh, thank you so much for sharing. Mm -hmm. And I, it's Grub E. Is it E Z Z? Um, it's S C R U, and then it looks like B Z Z. Okay. Scrubs, okay. scrubs, I guess. Okay. Um, they were on Amazon, so yeah, okay. for all body use, bathing, shampooing. Although we we said I don't know about shampooing, but um, anyways, just add water. So lather, scrub, and towel dry. So awesome! Thank good. you for sharing that. Yes. Right. I think.